Praise the Lord. Good morning. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so honored and thankful that we can. And Lord, you said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, give them thanks, be made for them authority over us. So we thank Lord for our president and vice presidents, senators and congressmen, the legislators, Supreme Court, just federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, armed force, FBI, CIA, DHS. Lord, we claim our salvation, deliverance, and protection that thou hearken diligent the voice of the word of God. We thank the Lord for leaders around the world, the nation, world, that every nation has a gospel preached, every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, then the engine come. And Lord, we pray for all of our labors out there, Lord, each and every one. We thank the Lord for meeting every one of their needs in Jesus' name. And Lord, we speak peace to our country. We decree and declare the United States of America is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus, that Jesus is Lord of the United States of America. And Father God, we thank you Lord, that we're a strong Christian nation. And Lord, I thank you for anointing me today that I'll be able to do, say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me under the Holy Ghost. I pray for all us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers your word led by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's over Bibles over here to Luke chapter 5. We read this here recently, just testimony about Peter. But we'll go here in Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. And it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he, Jesus, stood by Lake Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were going on and washing their nets. And they entered and uh, entered to one of the ships, which is Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said, Simon, launch out in the deep and let down your nest for a draught. And Simon answered and said, Master, we have toiled all night long, taken nothing. Never list thy word, I'll let down the net. And when they when they had done this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish in their neck, uh, their net, net break. And they beckoned under the partners of the ship they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me from a sinful man of the Lord. And he was astonished all the people with him and brought up fish that were taken. So also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And they said to him, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now, so we're here to please in Matthew chapter 14 and read this story we hear. In Matthew chapter 14, the scripture, we'll start here and let's start at verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get in the ship and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. When he sent the multitudes away, he went up a mountain apart to pray. When he was come, they were there alone. But the ship was down in the midst of the sea, tossed the waves for the wind's contrary. And the fourth watch of night, Jesus went and walked in the sea. And when the people saw him walk in the sea, they were troubled, said his spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them and said, Be of good cheer, as I be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. And he said, Come. When Peter's come down the ship, he walked on the water, go to Jesus. When he saw the wind voice, he was afraid, and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, said, Hold thou little faith, wherefore thou doubt. And when there come the ship, the wind ceased. Now, we have these two stories here about Peter. There's one situation here where Peter, um, you know, had fished all night long and hadn't taken anything. But, you know, when uh, Jesus got done ministering, he told Peter, launch out in the deep and let down your nets for a draw or a great catch of fish. And Peter responded by saying that he'd fished all night long. But nevertheless, G Peter still did what Jesus said to do. You know, James 1.22 tells us, but be doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. In fact, let's just go over there and read this. Go to James, it's like going towards the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> go past Hebrews, you know, like you're heading towards Revelation. And in James chapter 1, now the scripture says here in verse 22, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, not a doer, is like a man behold himself in the natural face, and behold himself, and goeth away straightway, forget what manner of man he was. Well, it's not enough just for us to hear the word, but we need to practice the word, put the word of God in action. We do that by acting like we are what God's word says we are. Scripture says we're more than conquerors. The Bible teaches us that greater is he that is us and he is the world. The scripture teaches us that we can do all things through Christ. And that's how we should talk and that's how we should act. That we always act on God's word. Not just hear the word. It's important that we hear the word. But see, we can sit around and listen to the word forever, seemingly, and never step out on God's word to act upon it. And when we hear God's word, a message from God's word, we need, we need to ask yourself, now what part of this am I not doing? 
You know, so often I've traveled around and, and ministered them, and thank God, got to minister in a lot of churches, and still do. But then, nevertheless, you know, you, you'd have people there the whole time you're teaching would say amen. Now, that's supposed to be, you know, I understand, amen means, that, you know, I agree. But the thing is that I, I noticed with those people as time went by, they were just, uh, they were sort of like mental agreeers with God's word. They, 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 most of them had never really acted upon God's word. They were just letting the rest of the congregation know that I, I know this, I've heard this. And when you're trying to help someone, even in a ministry or anything else, uh, you know, it could be the dentist trying to help somebody. And they say, yeah, yeah, I know that. You know, you need to floss. Yeah, I know that. I, I've heard that. Well, you know, when, when you say, I know that, what that does is that shuts down your brain from, from being creative to think about how you can do something better. And, and people get to kind of habit that. You know, I know, I know, I know. You know, you tell somebody, well, you know, the Bible said, by his stripes, I know I'm healed. Whoa, you know, and Jesus himself took our infirmities. I know, and bear our sicknesses. Well, when a person talks that way, that's the part they're not doing. Not doing the part that they know to do. And they sort of tell off on themselves. Because someone that, that's hearing God's word or trying to develop a strength in any of their life, they're going to pay attention. And when you say, I know that, you just stop paying attention and listening. No, you're thinking, there's something else I'm not doing here. You know, all of us have become some kind of strength in our life. You know, that we have a call a talent, ability, a God gift. It's something that, that we do individually that makes it, what we do individually, makes it look easy to other people. And that's the part of your life you want to develop. You want to develop that, that gift that God gave you or gifts that God gave you. So don't worry about your weaknesses. Everybody's got those. But, you know, work on your strengths. Make your strengths better. If you're in sales, become better at sales. If you're a preacher, you should always become better at preaching. I mean, I, yeah, I messed up in some services, and I never forget those services. I can point them out, the state, the place, maybe the hotel, that um, you know, I just messed up. And I learned from those. It makes me a better minister today. And you're gonna fail, you're, you're gonna make mistakes. You're, you're gonna sin. You know, People say they don't, they're, they're crazy. But you're gonna make mistakes. And what you wanna do is you wanna learn from those. And you can become better in life by learning from those mistakes that you made. You know, when you start out, it's not going to be perfect. And so often people wait till, you know, their life gets in all order before they step out and, and do something for God. No, you want to step out just the way you are. I think the first television program I ever did, when I got to watch it, and it was aired, it was green. It looked like a, I looked like a Martian. Did another one, and it turned out red. Well, you see, you're gonna, you're, you can't wait till things are perfect to do them. And so often people get so caught up in perfection that they procrastinate. And you want to step out and just, when you start out, it's not going to be perfect. But you're trying. You're doing it. You know, one person that owns this big corporation in America said, you know, if you wait till you get, get the product per perfect before you launch the pro product, you'll launch it too late. You should be embarrassed about some of the things that you launched out there. He said, what was he doing? He's trying to motivate people to step out. You know, Ford had Etzel. Um, GM had the X-Body car. There's failures. And people kind of point to those all the time. Oh, well, you know, they look what they did. They brought out that car as a piece of junk. They tried. And they guaranteed they learned something from it. If nothing else, they learned what not to do. But that's how you learn. You know, hotels, I travel a lot and stay in hotels and minister a lot in hotels and have for a long time. And talk to general managers. You know, usually I like to get to know the general manager, and I ask him, I I'm going to learn from them. They know something that I don't know. Everybody knows something that I don't know. If you stay open, you can learn from people. So I ask him questions, you know. I talked to this one, more than one, but this one general manager, this real large hotel, real sophisticated hotel. I mean, it's kind of like ostentatious, you know. And so I said, uh, you know, what, how do you learn, you know, or basically is what I'm saying to him. He said, well, I go by our complaints every day. The complaints is posted. I go by those, and they're written in because that's how we get better. Maybe someone complains about our towels. Somebody said, you know, if you notice when you in your room that you got there, Jesse, the shower curtain is different. Well, that happened because uh, I stayed in a hotel, and I'm a real big guy. He said, and when I stayed in a hotel, the uh, shower was too small. Bath, the hub and shower was too small, and it cramped me in with the curtain that they had. So I came back to the hotel and came up with a different plan. I let the guy know that managed that hotel, that I let him know that you know your showers and told him about the. He said he thanked me for it. He said that's how we learn. 
by the people that make complaints. Now, some people complain about everything. We ain't talking about those people. You know, I mean, who even wants to complain anyway? But he said, that's how I learned by our mistakes, by our faults. That's how we get better. You know, we, we want to make sure that every day we're getting better. Our employees are getting better. Our service is getting better. Our product's getting better. Their product was people staying at their hotel. You know, like Hilton or Conrad Hill, Be My Guest. He wrote the book, Be My Guest. It's a great read. But what did he learn? He learned about his customers, what they didn't like, what was wrong. And, you know, you, you, you learn from people. So if you're starting out in life in a business or something, in a ministry, you, you're going to learn from other people. You need a mentor, someone's shoulders you can stand on, because they've already made the mistakes. So that person's going to help train you in the ministry or sales or whatever you're into. See, they've already been down the road, so they'll give you some shortcuts. And then if you, when you do mess up, you'll think, now what did they do when they messed up? Because they did mess up. A brother called me yesterday. He's telling me some stuff about what he did wrong. And I said, well, good for you, brother. Praise God. You learned something from it. And look how, you, look how God got you out of it. You were trained if something came up, what to do. And you did what you were trained to do, and it got you out of the problem. Well, that's what we do as believers. We learn by mistakes. You know, if you don't make any mistakes, you're not going to learn. But you learn by trial and error. Prove all things. Hold fast. That was good. And so people want to wait till everything gets perfect for, perfect for they ever do it. So work on your strengths. Make your strengths stronger. Make your strengths better. You know, if you're, if you're good at throwing, shooting free throws, then you keep working on them. And you keep working on them. You do like 100 of them a day. You know, you hear people that practice tell you that. Well, I'm already good. I'm already at 70%. But see, they're working to get better at it. That's what we do as believers. You know, so, so often people don't work on their life. You're, you're your own project. And you want to work on it every day. That you get better at whatever you do. And, and study and grow and develop and learn. Colonel Sanders, one thing he was good at was making chicken. Mrs. Fields is one thing that she was good at. She made a, a chocolate chip cookie. Mac and Danim is my favorite. But anyway, that's what she was. So she worked on that, what she was good at already. And she became better at it. Tom Brady, he throws the ball. He's not a, he doesn't tackle. You would want to see him block people. No, you just want him to release the ball or whoever your quarterback is. That's what they're trained to do. Now, there's some other quarterbacks today are running the ball and making touchdowns. I got that. But nevertheless, you know what we're talking about here. They work on that ball. They got to put that ball, you know, in position on the field. They throw it before the guy even gets there. Why? Because they practice that. That's what they were good at. That's why they got drafted. Because someone watched them in high school and someone watched them in college. Those scouts did. And they said, you know, hey, they told the team, we need to get this guy. Well, he's not that good. Well, when he's good, he is excellent. And we're just going to put he's excellent at. We're going to make him even better at it because we're going to practice all the time. And Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on the water. He's always going to remember about this. He could go over this and say, now, you know, I remember I stepped out of the boat. And I did fine. I was walking on the water. Now, how did I get to sink? Let's see. I remember I, I started looking around stuff I shouldn't be looking around at. So what did he do? He learned something from that. And when he was fishing there and he caught nothing, you know, what happens if he hadn't showed up for work that day? How about the fishing's been bad for the last few days? I don't know if it was, but let's say it was. Oh, why go in today? You know, the last four or five days, I didn't make any sales, didn't make any contact, contacts. No. He, what did he do? He went back out. And when he's out there, he caught nothing. And now he's cleaning this. And this is an easy work. You know, he wants to do something like this. But he's doing it. This is what his business is. You know, people have businesses. They're working like 16 hours a day because they got to make this business survive. And many times, employees don't realize that. But nevertheless, he came to work that day. And by coming to work today, he's going to get a miracle. He's going to get a miracle of the fish. But forget that. He's going to follow Jesus now. What would happen if he hadn't showed up that day? Maybe they wouldn't have made the connection. And this is another thing is, as you follow God, you're going to lead. You're, he's going to lead you to make a connection to somebody. And that somebody, they're going to open the door for you. If you keep showing up, you keep doing what you can and do it as unto the Lord. Someday, somewhere, you're going to meet someone that's going to open a door to you. And when they open the door to you, they're going to treat you like a VIP because you got favor with God and man. But you always have to do something. And you have to do those things you dread to do, that you don't like to do, that you think that you're better at it, you don't really need to do it. Eventually, you keep doing this, you have the people can do it for you. But nevertheless, you start out just everything, doing everything yourself. And when you start out doing everything yourself, you're going to learn all those, uh, you know, all those activities, all those projects. And you'll know how they function. But later on, as, as your life grows and prospers, then you'll be able to have other people do those things. Like maybe get somebody to clean your house and wash your car and things like that. But at the beginning, you're doing it all yourself. And by doing those things, it attracts an open door to you. 
Jesus said, you go to town, you find a man the pitcher. I think this guy's not carrying this pitcher around. Ah, you know, I think I'll just leave it home today. And there he also, he said, you'll find a man the cold. Though no man's ever rode. See, all these little things that people do are, are big deals. The little things aren't big deals. And but just by showing up. Sure, my first TV tape was screwed up. And the second was, and you know, made mistakes on, in, in every area of my life. But you learn from those. You use those, that's how you, for the long life, that's how you achieve. And you learn how to grow and develop spiritually. So whatever your strength is, work on that strength. Forget about these weaknesses you got. Develop those strengths that you got. What you're good at, what are you good at? Then you wanna work on that. Don't, you can't be good at what someone else is at. They, they got some gift you don't have or I don't have. You know, I, I can't paint. You wouldn't want me to paint your house. But there's somebody who can paint and they make it look easy. And you kind of want to, you know, when I see them paint, I want to pick up a roller and put a brush, pick up a brush, but that's probably something you want to keep out of my hand. Nevertheless, there's something everyone has that's good. And some people have two or three things that are good. Those are areas you want to work on those strengths that you got and develop. Make them better. So you get better. They teach your best at what you do. And that's how you grow and achieve. God gave us, gave everyone something they have, at least one talent. Some people have five. You know, Jesus told the story about it. And the mistake the man made that the one, he didn't, he didn't think it was significant. No, I, everything's your, your little toe and your foot. I broke my little toe one time. You know, I never paid too much attention to my little toe until one day I broke it. I mean, it snapped like a pencil. Oh, I dropped the ground like a sack of potatoes I, instantly. And I tell you, my head knew about that toe. My, my teeth knew about that toe. I mean, it seemed like everything in my body hurt just from one little toe that I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to. Other, you know, other than you get a pedicure or something, you don't pay attention to your little toe. But boy, I found out that little toe is important. And see, I haven't noticed that I couldn't walk normal after that. You know, I, until this thing heals up. So just by one little toe hurting, it affected my whole body. And you know, sometimes doctors and chiropractors, people like that tell your body get out of whack when one part's not working. Just like your car would. You know, you got a broken motor mount. That affects the whole motor and everything else if you keep going down the road that way. And it, it's something you don't even see, but you just know something's not right. Well, you know, as a believer, Every person the body of Christ is important. Paul said, I plant, Apollos water, but God give the increase. And he said, I'm nothing, Apollos nothing, but it's God. So we can't think that because of what we do, it makes us special. We are special in God's eyes, and he gave us a special gift, and that needs to be done. So we don't get an ego. We don't become arrogant over. We become confident. And confidence is different than arrogance. Arrogance is sticking your nose up in the air like you're all this. Confidence is you, you just know what you want your doctor to have confidence, don't you? Wouldn't you want your lawyer to have confidence? Wouldn't you just want, you know, your dentist to have confidence? Knowing that they come in the room, they bring confidence with them. Yeah, that reassures you that they know what they're talking about. And this isn't all what that, you know, that you thought it was. You know, you wouldn't want your lawyer not to, boy, I tell you, I've never seen a case like this. I don't think I could ever win this. Ah, oh, man, I've never seen any teeth like that. I don't think I can do anything with these teeth. Wow, this is the worst teeth I've ever. Would you want that? Of course not. But see, many times preachers don't have confidence. It's like something's wrong with it. No, we're told to cast not away our confidence, which had great recompense reward. So God gave us confidence, and, he, and you want to develop your confidence. You want to make, you want to have develop that self confidence that God gave you that becomes strong and reassured. The more confident you become, the less the devil can do to you. And you want to a place that you walk just like Jesus did. You got your chin out. You know, you're going forth, you got your shoulders back, you're, you're conducting yourself. It affects your brain by the way your body acts. You know, you act like a loser, that's how your brain thinks. But we don't act that way. We're more than conquerors. We can do all things through Christ. I mean, why did God give us these verses for? We're not going to reach the world by just going without. We're going to reach the world when we get their attention. And they see that, you know, what we have works. Well, you wouldn't buy a product if you didn't think it worked. If it wasn't working for the person selling them. You know, one time uh, Zig Ziglar told a story about he was training a guy to sales. This is back when people sold door to door. How about this? Talk about cold call. I mean, it's one thing when you're calling someone up in the office. That takes courage that and ask them, you know, if you can meet with them. But just go to the door and start knocking on doors. Well, anyway, so he had this guy and they sold cookware. The company did. And so Zig takes him out on a sales. You know, he says, I want to go with you because he hadn't been selling anything. And, I, and I'm going to see, see your presentation. So he goes to his house, he's got this, they're gonna have a party, you know, you present the cookware, then they'll cook it, use the cookware in the kitchen, show the people, the ladies that showed up, about how the, all this, you know, cookware is so spectacular, it makes food taste better and all this. So they, that's a presentation. So 
Zig's sitting there and he's listening and the guy, he says he, he gave the best performance I think I've heard. And he's been working for us for months and hadn't sold anything. And he kept right down to close, you know, and no one bought it. And the food was excellent. He cooked it. He prepared it. He did, I couldn't find anything wrong with the guy. And so he says, we got in the car, head back. He's driving. And I said to him what his name was. Let's call, let's call him Jack. Jack, um, you know, you did excellent tonight. I, I've never seen someone that's a beginner do better than you. You know, I just can't, I can't understand how come you couldn't close. Oh, you know, I know. I've been working on it, you know. He says, you know, Jack, let me ask you something. Do you have our cookware? Do you own it? Oh, he says, you know, Mr. Ziegler, I was going to get it. And, you know, a few months ago, I was going to get it, and the car broke down. I get the car fixed. You know, I was going to buy it. And then, uh, you know, the next next month I was going to get it, but the kids started back to school, and I had to buy them school clothes. And the next thing you know, my wife had to have something done, and so I had to use the money I was saving for that cookware to buy it, and I had to use it for her. He said, Zig said to him, he said, Jack, your problem is that you know when you're selling, you don't even have the product yourself, and that comes from you. People pick up on that, whether you use those words or not. You know, what you got, it should work. And what you share is what works. And when people say, I know, I know, that's an indication that they're not doing it. Because when you hear information, you're always learning more. You don't act like you know it all, because you can't learn that way. But when you act like, you know, there's something else. If you're trying to get in a door some cor corporation, you're going to let them know, you know, I want to learn everything that you know. Man, I drill pastors and ministers. You know, the other day, they was talking to Ted Shuttlesworth. I want to know everything he knows. They know something I don't know, which would be easy. But the thing is, that's how you learn. That's how you grow. But you act like, oh, yeah, I've already heard that. You don't have to get up and preach, and everybody's already got their legs crossed, arms crossed. They've already read Mark 11, 23, and they know all about Mark 11, 23. And the Lord dealt with every church you go to. I want you to teach on Mark 11, 23, unless I tell you something different. So I'm going around all these churches and preaching Mark 11, 23. Not people who cross their legs and cross their arms on the front row. And I, oh, we've already heard this. And this kept going on for a long time. Only one day I was going to my garage and getting ready to leave to go do a meeting. And the Lord said, do you know anybody can speak to something and get, it would leave? And he brought up a term. I don't know what we use. I stopped and think for a moment. He said, therefore, keep teaching it. See, people act like they know it. No, when we hear something, from, especially from God's word, we don't act like we know it. That's disrespectful. We're thinking, thinking now there's something here God's trying to get across to me that I haven't got yet. And I guarantee there's a lot in Mark 11, 23 I haven't got yet. And I'm almost preach that scripture almost every day. It's always given forth life. But as soon as someone says, oh, I know that, yeah, I know that, yeah, I know that, yeah, I know that, yeah, I know that, not only it's annoying and, and kind of creepy, but nevertheless, they shut down of, of receiving more because they're actually saying, God, I already know this. None of us already know it, but we can always be learning and we can make our life better. And we should be. You should work on your life every day to make your life better, your mind better, your body better, your spirit man stronger by gaining knowledge of God's word. I mean, you got the internet day, it's flooded with materials. I, you could get your doctor's degree on, on the internet just by studying and researching and spend time every day growing your brain and growing your and changing your life and becoming a better person. Because the more knowledge you have, the more things you can do. It's like having money. The more money you have, the more choices you have. And that's why God wants his people prosperous and blessed. You know, the church doesn't realize that they're an heir of Abraham's blessing and they fight off prosperity. They'll boldly tell you, I don't like those prosperity preachers. I'm not in that prosperity gospel. Well, <laughs> it was Jesus that made, became poor that church. And you're an heir of Abraham's blessing. It was God that made Abraham rich. So it's in your covenant. And when you say, and you tell people that you're not in that gospel, that prosperity gospel, that intimidates other people. They're thinking, well, maybe I'm, I'm, getting, I'm going down the wrong path because I've been listening to the tapes or the CDs. You don't want to do that. You know, by doing so, you're, you're, you're scamming people when you do that. It's a terrible thing to do that to people. Many Christians have been scammed. They got scammed in church. You heard somebody tell them that God doesn't always heal. This is really bad for you to say things like that. Jesus bought our, he went through hell, so to speak. He did go to hell, but he went through hell to pay our price. He went through hell. When you read Isaiah 52, he was beaten so much he didn't look like a human being. That was to take our sicknesses and take our diseases. And then people scoff at that and say, well, that was true. Why don't people have good health? Well, if the blood of Jesus is true, why is people sin? It is true. His blood is true. And by his stripes, you are healed. And he did become poor. 
And he did give you Abraham's blessing. Abraham's blessing was not spiritual. It was financial. And you're going to hear some, you know, person that's ignorant try to talk you out of it. You don't have to talk you out of any of your blessings. You're going through this life once. It was God said the righteous person should have wealth and riches in their house in Psalm 112, verse 3. Read today's daily devotion. It belongs to you, that covenant. And in that covenant is prosperity. You know, some people in the Bible want without prosperity. That's their choice. You know, Paul chose not to get married. That's his choice. See, people make choices, what they want to do. But that doesn't mean it's for everybody else. And Jesus paid this price for us. He wants us to prosper. He wants to have wealth and riches. But people are taught at home that, you know, they're, they're always told their kids, their, their children are always taught, we can't afford that. Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. And then people ridicule people as prosperous and blessed. And then they hear at school. And this keeps on going on. So kids are bombarded and they lose their, their achievement that they want to achieve in life. And there's something inside of a guy when he's 18 years old, he wants to get out of the house and take off. And don't go do something. I mean, nothing else. Join the military. But they want to get out of the house because they want to make it on their own. I don't know how girls think, but guys, that's just any guy. You want to leave the nest. You want to get going. And you'll make a lot of mistakes out there. And you'll be, you know, come back dragging your heels to your parents. But nevertheless, they'll be, they're not going to say, I told you so. They're going to be glad that you learned. I mean, some of them will do that. But they're going to be glad you learned something. From, did you learn from something from it? That's the important thing. You'll learn something. That's going to help you out later on. All those ministries that you know are service over the years that I may have made a mistake and I learned something from that I can go right back to my mind and remember where I preached in Dover Delaware and I can remember myself in New Haven Connecticut and I know the place I was at where you know I missed it well you learn from that and it makes you a better preacher it makes you a better minister it makes you a better salesperson a better wife a better chef anything I mean there's some chefs burned some food and came with some concoctions that no one would eat but they tried and so often Christians don't try. How you, what, they did a survey and asked people, how, how could you become wealthy? And the number one question, I mean, excuse me, to the question, the answer was, was to win the lottery. That was the number one answer. How are you going to become successful? Why was it? Because they weren't taught in school how to make money. I mean, I was never taught in school how I can make money and become wealthy and successful. There was no class that taught you how to become wealthy and prosperous. You know, the government has to keep people poor and keep that entitlement programs and take away their ambition. That way they can control the people. But we are Christians, we're born again, we're liberated by the Lord Jesus Christ. The number two reason was litigation through lawsuits. That's how I get my money. And look what it did to doctors. I mean, you can't, it's, it's hard to find a doctor who has his own practice today. All because of the health care laws changed and because the government regulations and lawsuits. Malpractice. I mean, you used to be able to have the doctor down the street, he'd come to your house. That all changed. I mean, when I was in school, they tell people it's real smart, you need to be a doctor. Because they made the money. Now doctors don't make that kind of money. Some do, but the average of them don't. And plus, they owe so much money from the, the medical schools that they took you know, take, got their education, it's going to take them a while to pay that back. But nevertheless, you can learn every day as a believer. You can learn by just going online. You can learn by asking other people, hey, how did you do that? Not, oh, I already know that. I mean, you're watching some, if I'm watching someone cook on a grill, I'm learning something to watch them cook on a grill because I don't have cook on a grill. I can kind of use a microwave, but I still watch people who use their microwave. You know what? I never knew you could do that with a microwave. Oh, yeah. You can make hard boiled eggs in a microwave. You don't have to boil water. I, this stuff, like I didn't know. So every day, if you stay open, you can learn. Not judge people, ah, I already know that. That person, who wants to be around that person anyway? No, we learn from everyone. Everyone knows something we don't know. And we can learn from those people, and we should. And learn by their mistakes, and what they did was wrong. We can learn by that, and definitely by our own mistakes. But see, we can get a, go a lot further in life if we stay teachable. You know, I heard a martial arts instructor say that you know, the hardest thing is life and training is training someone who's already had martial arts somewhere else. He said, I'd rather get a person that's either real young, real old, or who, I don't care what their age is, that's never been taught anything about martial arts because they're easier to teach. But I got some guy or person comes to my class and they've already had it, and they, what they were taught was, un, was wrong. Now the, I got to unlearn them, untrain them. And it takes a lot longer. And some of them won't let me do it because they act like they're so cocksure that they know what they're doing. 
And you know, I've had people call me in the ministry, and you start telling them about the Bible. Oh, I know, I know. I said, well, then why'd you call me for? You're the one that's got the problem. You're calling me. See, I know, I know, I know. And just like Zig Zag, that guy, do, do you have the product? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Ziggler, I've been planning on getting it. He said, that's inside of you. Until you get the product, you're going to know inside your mind and in your heart the reason these people aren't going to buy this because I ain't have it myself. You know why? We have to get success, or excuse me, results with God's Word so people see our success. The object of God's Word is get results. You're going to do that by putting it in practice and not taking a no for an answer. That you're always going to God, you're reading His Word, and you're stepping out in faith in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray today in Jesus' name, I thank the Lord from each friend that's able to view. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs, that you're challenged to step out for the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you, Lord, that they're healed, delivered, and redeemed. We thank you, Lord, our nation is protected by the blood of Jesus. And we give you all the praise and glory. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. You're viewing today, and you haven't received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You need to do so. There's something you want to get done and get it over with. Let's pray a prayer right now for you to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You say this prayer, and you'll become born again. God, I come to you to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe he hung on a cross. You put my sins upon him. He died and was resurrected from the dead on the third day. He's alive today. So I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that my sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me that I'll never go to hell. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to encourage you to find a church to go to. Get a Bible if you don't have one. Start reading the Gospel of John. Find a church to go to that preaches Jesus Christ the only way to heaven. And that church helps you grow and develop spiritually. And so will this congreg the congregation and the pastor, people on staff. They're going to help you. You know, and if you listen to them, follow along the Bible, you're growing and develop spiritually. Amen? Good. Now, if you're not, uh, if you got a prayer request, I want to encourage you, you can email our ministry at jesuitsministries.com. Or if you get a testimony. Also, you want to sign up for the daily devotion. You get that every morning sent to you on your computer, iPhone, or whatever you got that you get your emails and you read. Today's is awesome. Every day is excellent. I like them. And I want to encourage you to spend some time in God's Word. Keep learning from God's Word. Keep developing yourself. Also, we're here in the mornings at 8 a.m. live. If you'd like to be on Facebook live with us, you can. In the evening, you can call in at 7 o'clock in the evening. Tonight's going to be Patrick D. But anyway, every night, 7 o'clock, call in. If you, if you don't get through, just keep trying. Don't give up. Be perse persevering in all things. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mine. We love you. Praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.